In this video, we will review the concept of Pythagorean theorem that you developed through your work as a math student in the middle school. Now just a reminder that watching a video for learning and understanding is very different than watching a video for entertainment purposes. You want to make sure that you're in a quiet place where you can pay attention to um, and focus on what it is that you're learning. If I say something that doesn't make sense, you want to make sure that you stop, pause, rewind, replay the video as many, many times as you need to in order so that you can fully understand what's going on in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get down to business here. We are given in this first example a right triangle XYZ, and they want us to label the two legs in the hypotenuse. And again, just a reminder, uh, from your time in middle school, that in a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite or across from the right angle. So in this triangle here, angle Z is the right angle. We know this because it's been marked with that box or that block. And so the side opposite or across from angle Z is going to be XY or the hypotenuse of our right triangle. The two sides that together form the right angle in our triangle are the legs. So the right angle is here at Z. These two red sides would be the legs of our right triangle. Again, recall from your middle school time that the Pythagorean theorem says that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Now sometimes we'll shorten this to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in other words, the length of the first leg squared plus the leg length of the second leg squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. Notice that because addition is a commutative operation, it does not matter which leg you substitute into that formula first. All right. Let's go see some examples of some problems or how we might be expected to use these ideas to solve some problems in geometry. In exercise one, it says in the diagram of triangle ABD, the measure of angle D is equal to 90 degrees, the length of segment AD is eight, and the length of side AB is 10. Find the length of BD. Now there may be some symbols or some representations in this question that you're not fully aware of or fully familiar with. The first of which might be that little triangle. That is exactly what it looks like. It's, it's a symbol meaning triangle. The M in front of angle D stands for measure. So this says the measure of angle D is equal to 90 degrees. And recall from your studies of geometry in middle school that anytime you have an angle that measures 90 degrees, that is a right angle. So in this picture over here, I'm going to mark or label angle D as being the right angle. And that's going to be important for us because we can now identify the hypotenuse in the two legs. Side AD has length 8. I'm going to label that in the picture. Side AB has length 10. I'm going to label that in the picture. They want us to find the length of side BD. So I'm going to label that with an X in my picture. So now I've got a right triangle where I know the length of two out of the three sides and I want to find the third. This is a perfect setup for using the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My hypotenuse in this picture is the length or the side opposite the right angle. So in this case, my hypotenuse is 10. My two legs are x and 8. So when I go to substitute into this formula, my first leg, x squared, plus my second leg, 8 squared, is equal to the hypotenuse, 10 squared. Recall that if I had wanted to, I could have substituted in the 8 first and the x second. Where you put which leg does not make a difference. So x squared plus 64 is equal to 100. I'm going to go ahead now and subtract 64 from both sides of my equation. So x squared is equal to 36. 
And now to finish this off, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to, it can either be a positive 6 or a negative 6. In this case, x represents the length of one of the sides of our triangle. Negative 6 is an inappropriate solution. It doesn't make sense. We can't have a negative number for the length of a side of a triangle. So we're therefore going to reject the possible solution of negative 6. The length of BD, therefore, is equal to 6. At this point, I would encourage you, if you have questions about anything I've said or done, to stop, pause, rewind, replay the video. And if you still have questions, I would jot them down so that when you come to class, you can be prepared to, uh, be prepared to ask your questions and get some clarification. In the meantime, I'm going to go on to this last example. In example two, they want to know whether or not the triangle whose sides have lengths 5, 7, and 13 is a right triangle. And they want us to justify our answer. Well, we know that any triangle that is a right triangle has sides that, whose lengths will satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at these three side lengths, the 5, the 7, and the 13, and I'm going to see if they satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, when I substitute them into the Pythagorean theorem, do they work or do they not work? Now the only thing that might be a little bit tricky when you do this is you do have to be careful about what goes where in the Pythagorean theorem. The longest side is always going to be the potential hypotenuse for the triangle. The two shorter sides would be your potential legs. So I have to make sure that when I go to substitute this in, I substitute 5 and 7 in place of the legs, 13 in place of the hypotenuse. So what I really want to do is come down to this Pythagorean theorem, this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I want to substitute in 5 and 7 in, places, in place of a and b, 13 in place of c, and see if it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, if I square 5, and add the square of 7, does that equal the square of 13? And I'm for, in order to do this, I'm simply going to get out my calculator, and all in one step, I'm going to plug in 5 squared plus 7 squared. My calculator tells me the answer to the left side of the equation is 74. And when I use my calculator to square 13, I get 169. So the answer to this question is, no, it's not a right triangle. And as for the reasoning, as for the justification, the sides do not satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Now hopefully, as I've gone through this video, you've paid close attention and you've taken good, careful notes. If I were to look at your notes for number two, I would expect that the notes on your paper look exactly like the notes that I presented to you in class. Why? Well, because I'm going to show you the easiest, shortest, fastest, most efficient way to get full credit. So the chances are very good if you're trying to make up your own way or take partial notes, you're not going to be showing the work or the amount of work or the type of work that you need to show in order to get full credit for your solution. So I would encourage you now, if you haven't, you want to make sure that you go back and fully complete the notes exactly as they are presented to you here in the video. At this point, I'm going to thank you for the gift of your time in watching the video and have you flip up to the top of the next page I do want you to take a few minutes to think about and reflect upon what the key ideas and important takeaways that you need to remember from this video are. And then once you've done that, see if you can apply your new knowledge and understanding in order to solve the questions on that page.